Bulumanaka and welcome to Gold FM Speak Your Mind. And uh, well, this week, uh, today, actually, we tackle the issue that of water, something very important in our lives, something that we can't, and I know this from personal uh, experiences, we can't live without. And joining me and lighting up the studio this, uh, well, afternoon, the Gold FM studio, welcome to the show, Ms. Uh, Eleanor Ongenibar-Ravi, the Principal Policy Analyst of the Department of Water and Sewage. And also being joined by Eva Koroi Samanunu, the Water Supply, Sanitation and Hygiene Officer at the Secretariat of the Pacific Community. A very good afternoon to you, ladies. Good afternoon, Pedeli. Yeah. Right. Water of or the or water, the importance of water. We all know how important this is. And there's a day put aside, March the 22nd, to celebrate. Now, why, why a day? Why a day and, and, and how did this come about? I'll, I'll, I'll ask um, uh, Eva first. I'll ask Eva first. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, uh, Pedeli. A very good afternoon to all our listeners out there. Um, as you m- mentioned earlier, what is a very important resource, natural resources. And um, a day to celebrate water is quite important because everyone needs water. Mm-hmm. We all need water to survive, not just the human being, but plants as well. All living beings need water. So... Um, this day to celebrate water started off in 1999 uh, by the United Nations General Assembly. But in Fiji, we started off um, celebrating World Water Day, I think, in about 2003. And it's been happening uh, from then until now. Um, the reason why we need to have water is because in 2003, they launched what is called the Millennium Development Goal. And uh, we're trying to have people have access to water supply, sanitation. So um, this year, being 2015, and the global thing being water and sustainable development, we're trying to check back on how we've achieved in terms of accessing water supply uh, around the world. And bring this closer to home is here in Fiji, looking at the situation that we have and looking at the current stats that we have through the uh, joint monitoring program um, that we are on par uh, with regards to accessibility to water supply. But sanitation is something that we still need to work on a little bit more um, for Fiji alone. But I'll be speaking uh, more frankly on the Pacific uh, region as well. Uh, At the moment, recent stats in 2003 and the snapshot of the Pacific, it says that we are about 53%, 57% rather, uh, in terms of water supply accessibility, uh, that's about just above half of the percentage. Yeah? Yeah. So uh, we'll know we in the Pacific are quite unique because of our location and uh-huh. also the difference between Atoll Islands and Highlands. So um, what is quite important for us here in Fiji, we are quite fortunate. We have we can say we have enough water supply but we can't say the same thing about the uh, small island nations uh, like Tuvalu, Kiribati who struggle to have access to water all the time. So that's why it's important. It's a day to observe water and also a day to talk about how important water is and also to make people aware about how important this resource is and for them to know how they can manage the little that they have now. Well, looking from a regional introduction for the perspective of Water Day, we look to our local and being driven by the Ministry of Infrastructure and Transport through the Department of Water and Sewage. And uh, thank you, Eleanor, for joining us again uh, this afternoon. Now, let's look at the approach for our national approach to Water World Water Day. Yes, thank you, Pedeli. Uh, as Eva has said, uh, water is very important. And from the national point of view, you know, you cannot have sustainable development if you don't have water. And, uh, you know, water actually contributes to every aspect of life and uh, for our everyday living and uh, also for development. And um, in the previous years, Fiji has celebrated water and uh, in food security, water and energy. And this is the driving force behind our economy as well. And from the uh, government point of view is, you know, if we don't have good infrastructure and we don't have good quality water, then we cannot uh, attract investors into the country. And also, uh, we look at the health of our population Mm -hmm. and community. Therefore, government places water at a very uh, high um, 
you know, important uh, aspect of the services that we provide for the people of Fiji. Mm. Now, you know, it's interesting that this should be also a, uh, there'll be a multi-sectoral uh, approach to World Water Day celebrations. And I, I, I looked at it and it was like, you know, what we don't understand or the general public, we expect to have water. It's a basic need. And we don't look at really break it down to how important it is to other aspects of our lives. Okay, we know for certain health. You wash your hands. Yes. You need to keep it clean, and also with the respect to the Ministry of Health, and and uh, and looking at how important that they also disseminate that right uh, that type of information. Now, with hands, with uh, with uh, the UN, they they put out. I, I looked at some of the or what was available, the material. It was very, very simple, clean approaches. Clean hands can save lives. Yes. Yeah. Now that's I mean from that simple statement, we look at what is behind it. Now, would you care to expand a little bit about from the health section? Okay, um, Pedele, I've been talking about the economic okay. um, bit of it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, you've got to have a healthy a population and a healthy workforce to be able to generate uh, that uh, income or you know to get things moving within the country. We cannot move forward if we have a very sickly population. So that is the idea behind having that clean, clean water, like you said. Yeah. If we have a very sickly population, then we'll be spending most of our budget on uh -huh. trying to uh, you know, get people well, to get them to mm -hmm. work, and get them to generate income. Mm -hmm. So this is the idea behind us uh, promoting uh, clean water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I just yes, uh, yeah, sure. add on to what uh, Eleanor said? The, like you said, that statement, eh? mm -hmm. clean hands saves lives. Uh, we have a, some like incidents of uh, waterborne diseases such as typhoid That's and right. diarrhea, which is related to water. Mm -hmm. And also, again, speaking from the Pacific perspective, the Pacific region have a very high incidence of diarrheal cases uh, reported, especially with children under five. So the importance of having access to clean, safe water is uh, quite important. And that's why with this World Water Day, every year we try to target the schools. Uh, because we feel that the children are agents of change. If we try to promote these, talk about water and promote water conservation and management in schools and involve students in participating in activities such as poster competition, murals, the, it will empower them and make them to think how important this, this resources is. And when we look at water, it's not just for basic needs like for drinking, for washing, for cooking. It's for food production, as you said. Mm -hmm. um, when there's no water, it affects our food security. Industrialization, uh, workforce, health, you know, uh, economy-wise. So that's why it's important to always, um, to, uh, always target. Uh, that's why we're targeting students, eh, in terms of, and we have activities for schools, which Eleanor can elaborate more uh, on that. All right, we'll do that very shortly, ladies, but for now, we'll take a very short break here on Gold FM, Speak Your Mind. <laughs> Welcome back to Gold FM, Speak Your Mind, and we are talking about World Water Day. And for those of you who just caught the last bit, we did uh, talk a little bit about the approach that uh, the national, um, uh, well, the, the, the national approach for World Water Day and how important it is to have our agents of change, and that's school children, involved in, in uh, programs such as this. Now, um, if, um, Eleanor, if you could just tell us a little bit more about what this entails. Thank you, uh, Pedeli. Um, the way we see it, or the, what we believe in, is children, as Eva has said, are the catalysts for change. Mm -hmm. And if you want people to change their mind, uh, the older people are a bit uh, too old. They've got their mindsets already, so it's yeah. quite difficult to get <laughs> them to change behavior. Yeah. Yeah. So we target children because, um, say, five, ten years' time, 
we can see that change taking place. And the main thing that we would like to drive with children is the conservation of water. Because we tend to take water um, for... You tend to take water for granted, especially us here in, the, in Suva. Eh? While we're taking water for granted here, we have uh, members in the West or maybe out in the islands yes. that are actually suffering because they don't have enough water. So f therefore, with the ministry, we have moved around in the last uh, uh, three years just taking out World Water Day out into the communities to raise awareness Mm -hmm. and the importance of water conservation, water quality, you know, the quality of water that they drink. So this year we're taking it to 90. Okay, so this is where the center of the, the celebrations will be? Yes, okay. the center of the national celebration for Fiji is in 90, and we're having it at Koroi Volu Park right. on Friday the 20th of March. Uh -huh. yeah. So that uh, program, Pedeli, starts off with a march, uh, through 90 town by the Fiji military forces and uh, followed by the children and our uh, stakeholders. And then our chief guest uh, for World Water Day is uh, the chief executive officer of uh, Water Authority of Fiji, mm -hmm. Mr. Opataya Ravai. Yeah. And then we have a full day program for the children. We have uh, quizzes and um, all our stakeholders have been asked to bring in prizes that uh, for ever, whatever set of uh, questions that they have, they will provide prizes for that. And then we have a placard competition. That's for the secondary, primary, and also our kindy okay. uh, children are also participating. And then uh, throughout the day, we have oratory contests uh, happening. And then in between, we have the schools uh, represented uh, to come up with songs and uh, entertainment throughout the day. So it's a full day program up until uh, 3 p.m. and we look forward to um, you know, just enjoying the day with our stakeholders and also with the community at large. Mm -hmm. So we um, actually are inviting people around the Nandi area, there are booths that will be there that they can always come in and uh, see our stakeholders. They will all have a booth available on the day. Now you've got the, the Department of uh, Water and Sewage involved. And uh, we've got uh, the SPC uh, also involved. Uh, you've got Water Authority of Fiji also involved. Are there other stakeholders? How many other stakeholders involved? Yes, Pedeli. We have uh, Ministry of Agriculture because mm -hmm. they do a flooding um, in uh, Nandi and the uh, Integrated Water Resource Management Program. And we have ITOK Affairs mm -hmm. because they deal with our rural communities out in the, um, in the communities where they serve. Mm -hmm. Sorry. And then we have um, a Rotary Pacific Water for Life that does a lot of work out there. Then we have Mineral Resources Department mm -hmm. that deals with boreholes, mm -hmm. a Department of Environment, and um, uh, Ministry of Health, sorry. <laughs> Ministry of Health. What are the important yes. Words? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and Meteorological Services. And the uh, yeah, Department of Energy, those are some of the stakeholders that will be there to um, exhibit and also talk to the communities about the services that they provide. You know, looking at that, it's just you know, mentioning all these different departments and uh, sectors that are being involved with the celebration of World Water Day. It just goes to show just how mm -hmm. multisectoral this approach is, on, I mean, on the multisectoral approach for water and how important it is. It even goes on to look at water. I, I read a little bit about of, into mm. gender and, and equality, yes. you know, and looking at the economic aspects of it. And that's what, you know, we're kind of, you know, we, is that one of the, of the hopes and hoping to achieve, to have a little bit more awareness on to just how wide, mm. it's not just about the water that we're using, yeah. but just how wide the effects are. Yes. Um, Thank you, Pedeli. Uh, we're looking at the wide effects of it, mainly uh, in the ministries, giving back the dignity to women and children. Uh, because if they had to go out and fetch water, it'll be women and children that will be sent out to fetch water. So um, what government is doing now is actually making it aware that you know government is stepping in and putting up developments and uh, 
uh, schemes in place that uh, we give back that dignity to women that they sit at home and do other things, tend to mm. more important things in the family rather than going out to fetch, fetch water. water. Yes. yes. And uh, I forgot uh, to mention Water Authority will be part of the uh, exhibition as well. Uh -huh. And they'll also be giving out their forms for that free water. Um, okay. Um, uh, and yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure a lot will be very interested yes. in that. So <laughs> come on down. Water Authority Friday. will be there Friday. <laughs> yes. Koroivolu Park. In Koroivolu Park from 9.30 to 3 p.m. Now, uh, well, well, we mentioned that, Eva, I'm also looking at, you know, how well are we in the Pacific? You mentioned that 57% of are receiving, uh, well, good water and mm -hmm. good sanitation. How well are we performing against the rest of the world? Mm. Uh, it's still a struggle. We still have a lot of work yeah, to do. Yeah, we still have a lot of work to do. Uh, now, uh, most of the countries in the Pacific still haven't even reached halfway of reach or even reach the, uh, the Millennium Development Gold. Uh, f maybe for countries like Fiji, Samoa, Vanuatu, we've reached mm -hmm. in terms of half the population having access to, uh, to water. But then, you know, I always say it's one thing to have access to water, it's another thing to have access to clean, safe water. Water that is safe for everyone to use, to consume, and also it will not cause any sickness to us. And uh, I think uh, it's very good to get buy-ins from our leaders and governments. And I think Fiji is in progress in doing that with the provision of free water to all its consumers, uh, just to ensure that everyone, every people in Fiji have access to, to water. So I think um, countries have started to uh, work together in terms of prov uh, providing water. In a recent interview uh, by the National Geographic uh, to the uh, president of Kiribati, mm -hmm. and he was asked to, uh, to, ra to rank which are the most important issues in Kiribati with related to water security, food security. And then he said it's water security because it's the life life and everything. Because without water, you won't be able to survive. So uh, we all know how important uh, this water, water is. And, uh, you know, we've gone through a few drought situations uh, here in Fiji and also in other Pacific Island in countries. So, yep. Especially at this time with yep. the tropical cycle. Yep. All right. Any final remarks before we wrap up our segment? Final invitation? Yes, thank you, Pedeli. We invite the um, communities out there in Nandi. Please do come and support World Water Day and uh, meet our stakeholders that will be there to provide the services for you. And if you have any questions, you know, that's the time to raise it. We can always direct you in the right direction uh, should you have requests. Yeah. And um, we look forward to spending the day with the school children. It's always a joy to be around children. And just seeing the wealth of creativity out there, I'm just looking forward to the placards, really. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just, um, just being with them is a joy. And just to see, you know, what they come up with for this uh, World Water Day and with the theme, Water and Sustainable Development. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you very much, ladies, Thanks. for joining us on the show this uh, afternoon. Thank you. And uh, good luck to the program. And I will see whether I can make it to that at Korea. <laughs> it will be a joy to have you. <laughs> you can yes. be our um, uh, MC. See, I knew that we're going to throw that <laughs> in. <laughs> well, thank you very much, ladies. And we'll be right back. Uh, we'll be talking about ageism with uh, an actress and also, well, a stylist extraordinaire, <laughs> a diva, really, right after this on Speak Your Mind. Welcome back to Golden Fifth. Speak your mind, and uh, well, you can hear her. But if you're one of those who think that you know the type of clothing that we wear, uh, the, the style of clothes that you wear, define who you are. Well, get ready to meet a lady that is proud to be growing old in style. Now, I'm not even sure whether I should say the word old around her anymore. Now, welcome to the show, Bridget Sojourner, or known here in Fiji as Budge. Okay. Now, you've had a lot of, I mean, strong ties to Fiji? Yes. 
Now, a long time ago now. Yeah. So where let's for for those who don't know you, mm -hmm. where are you originally from? Uh the south of England, so Hampshire, Sussex, along the coast. And now I live in London. And mm -hmm. I think I'm a Londoner now. I've lived there a long time. But constantly in Fiji, every now and constantly then? Constantly all over the world I've Const worked. And then in Fiji in the 70s. And then I came back again and again. And my son lives here. And and my other son, both sons married mm -hmm. Pacific Islanders. So I've got Pacific Island children mixed with Afro-Caribbean, English now, great-grandchildren. So it's a multicultural world and family. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that colorful family comes the style. It does. It does. <laughs> now, just looking at the outfit and... Now, where does this all come from? I think it must have come from my mother who wore amazing hats. And then I think I can remember vaguely when I was... Uh, 10 or 11 drawing fashion uh -huh. I was always very interested in fashion but now I wouldn't call it fashion I'd call it style style yes now the reason also why we are featured tonight today is because of a, a little movie or film a documentary really that uh, you were involved with it was done in 2013 but has become a major a hit worldwide now the the documentary is called Fabulous fashionistas. Mm. Do you call yourself a fashionista? No, I don't like that title. We had a bit of an argument, debate, debate rather than argument about that with Channel 4 who made the film and the director. But um, they wanted to call it that. And I suppose actually it did ring some, it did, it did touch something, the, the title. So I wanted to call it Grandnan style. After really? Sai, you know, I thought that would be good. <laughs> Grandnan style. Grandnan style. Yeah. With this old dance. No, they didn't. They didn't <laughs> really want that. No, we didn't have the dance in it. <laughs> it's interesting because it's the lives of six women. Yeah. With an average age of eighty. Eighty. I'm going to ask the rude question. Yes. Can I ask the rude question? Yes. How old are you? Now? I'm nearly seventy-eight. And when you said, "Should you mention old?" Yes, it's great. It's an amazing time of life. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you get, I mean, how do people respond to you? To me. And, and when they see you, how, how? Well, I suppose as I've got older in England, a lot of people have noticed um, what I wear. Uh -huh. So that was the first intimation I had that maybe I could use that when I became very aware of ageism in society. Um, I'd been through all the other campaigns, you know, yeah. anti-sexism, anti-racism, all those. And then I suppose because I got older, I was interested in looking at ageism because it was so apparent in the media, particularly in England. With the images of fashion models, the particular mm. height, mm. particular weight. Yeah. And then you have old people in fashion magazines. Mm. And you've also modeled for some. Yes, but it, it's not, um, you know, it's not sort of uh, a lot of them. It's a bit of tokenism still. Really? Yeah, because it's like I'm Naomi sorry. Campbell, the black model, and she said she has tremendous arguments, uh, you know, that she's been there 20, over 20 years, but there aren't that many more black models in England. And it's the same with the older models. You'll find in the film, one of the model in the film says, who's 85, says, um, well, you know, there is a time now when older models happen, but actually, you also see in the film that actually it doesn't happen. It's that still doesn't... tokenism. Really? Yeah, I was just fortunate in that I felt I could use the modeling situation if I could meander my way in mm -hmm. as a, a campaign against ageism. Mm -hmm. But um, we'll see in the film that it doesn't quite come off. <laughs> now, how, how relevant is this? As you've been around the world, yes. and you've gotten a lot of um, uh, perspective from various pe uh, people around the world. Now, how, how do you see this? Even with third world countries, we could yes, say Fiji. Yes, and yes. How relevant is this? Well, I think, I mean, you see style in every country. Uh, so it doesn't matter what the, the, um, the racial aspect is or the culture, because I've been in Sudan and the colors are amazing and in parts of India and Bangladesh where I worked, people would put these, their um, sheets and their, their saris and their um, clothes out on the riverbanks in the morning. And the color was amazing. 
to go with the um, foliage. You know, it was just yeah. remarkable. So I think it is relevant. I think people do love dressing up in all sorts of different cultures. Mm. Mm. Certainly in England, yes. the, the, the different cultures there yeah. are very flamboyant, sometimes much more flamboyant yeah. than the dull English. And uh, Africa is absolutely an explosion of color in, in, in their outfits. Yes, and in South London, you get the African shops, which are a riot of color in the windows. Mm -hmm. But in England, then you have the, <laughs> the, the sort of the, the top shop aspects of the whites and the greys and the very... Yes. I like how she paints England as <laughs> well. <laughs> well, I don't mean to be, to be completely depressing, but yeah. All right. Well, how has the movie changed? So how have you felt? Like, has there been a little bit of change? In me? Yes, with you? Uh, yes, because I've done... And we've all gone on to do other things. That's what's amazing about the film. It just mm -hmm. didn't stop at that. We've all gone on to do other things. And um, tomorrow night, there's a showing of the film at USP. Sure. And that's at seven, I think, something like that. But that, that does show that, um, you know, that, that life doesn't stop. And even the film mm -hmm. has not been, oh, that's it, finished. But it still carries on. We've all carried on with doing different things. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll carry on talking about this yes. right after this short break on Gold FM Speak Your Mind and uh, talking about ageism and how important it is, well, style is to us all. Welcome back to Gold FM Speak Your Mind and uh, the movie Fabulous Fashionista. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about this movie coming. And uh, But we're talking to one of the stars of this documentary. And with us in studio, welcome again, um, uh, Bridget, or Bodge, to many here yeah. in Fiji. Thank you. Now, uh, Bodge, just before we took the break, we you spoke a little bit about how you, each of you, each of the six women featured in this movie, have gone on to do other things. What have you moved on to? Well, because I was an educator originally, um, I work as a gardener now, but I've gone back to um, running workshops on aging. Wait, you're, you're 70, how old are you now? Uh, nearly 78. Nearly 78? Yes. And you're a gardener? Yes, lovely. I retrained as a gardener about six years ago after the health education around the world sort of diminished a little. Uh -huh. um, so I retrained as a gardener, and I, yes, I used, used to have 18 gardens in London that I did, but there are not so many now. Okay. So I've got time to do other things. Right. So besides the gardening and the uh, media star input that has just sort of <laughs> happened in the last two years, uh -huh. um, I also run workshops now on uh, positive aging. So I go into schools and work with 15, 16-year-olds who think that life dies yes. at 30 um, and that they have to remain lunastic insects thin until that time and then life diminishes consider considerably. And um, I go into universities and work with nurses who now take degrees, of course, um, and I work with them on looking, again, at positive ageing. Their work with with people who are sometimes quite elderly in the hospitals. And I go into care homes and work with care workers. And so it's progressing um, and it's sort of proliferating now in different areas of, of work and life in England and hopefully the world mm -hmm. in that um, looking at age doesn't have to be a deterioration. Now, when you, you come to Fiji... And you look at what how we are here in Fiji. How do you how do you view it? How do you see? Mm, well, of course, the um, the area of death, the time of death, mm. is much more low in the population in this country. I mean, ours is now rising to about a hundred. Yeah. Many people are going to live one in three or something going to live to a hundred by the year. Um, 2000 and what 25 yeah. or something in yeah. in Europe yeah. but in this country I think it's still quite low I yes. think it's about 60 
Well, there are quite a few aspects that we just mentioned in the previous right. with the previous guests of the conditions of uh, yes. livelihoods here in the yes. Pacific Islands too. Yes. May, plays a very strong factor in it. So yes. let's let's look at you know other parts of the world and how the film and how what type of responses that you've gotten. Yes, from, uh, quite amazing. Apart from the people on the streets who were um, sort of on the streets on public transport in shops, they were uh, approaching all of us uh -huh. after the film showed. The initial At least reaction three, three times a day. My friends couldn't believe it until they were with me when mm -hmm. people were approaching me. Amazing, just saying how inspirational the film was, which just showed that the media has got it wrong. That life does not have to deteriorate, and you don't have to retire people. At, you know, certainly <laughs> on television, the newscasters don't have to be all men with silver hair and young girls with brown and black. Is that still apparent in, in absolutely, television? Absolutely, absolutely. The most um, uh, most popular woman newscaster in England has said she has to keep dyeing her hair. If she has a grey hair, she won't get a job. She'll be demoted, sacked. Really? Unbelievable. Well, uh, and, and you think that, you know, with the advancement of work or development and advancement for women, mm. you'd think that this would have changed. You'd think so. It hasn't. So there's still discrimination there. Mm -hmm. And um, in this country, too, I think there's something, obviously, it, there's something that needs to be, what, looked at about mm. aging? Mm -hmm. um, because I know the climate does play an important part. I mean, I feel we're walking to Flagstaff. I have to get a taxi back now. I never did that. I could walk everywhere. It has become increasingly hot. It has. And obviously the, the effects of climate change is very real here. It in is. Pacific. And it's much more apparent than yeah. in the West where we can talk about it, but actually it, mm, it's yeah. not affecting us very much. All right, let's let's talk about you again because mm -hmm. well you have had lovely, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about the style. Mm. All right, and, and you've also done a little bit of modeling. Yes. How did that come up? Um, I was interested on the whole ageism thing. I thought, oh, well, I suppose modeling, I could become a model maybe. Let's try that. So um, to, to, on a political stance, you understand to um, refute the whole ageism yeah. bit in society. So I went into various modeling agencies with lots of portfolio photographs, which were really quite interesting, yes. I thought. And, um, and but, we'll be seeing some of these. And yes, we'll these. yes, and they um, they didn't really want to know. Really? Yes, but I did find a young French designer who was making clothes for older women. Dreadful um, title, Old Ladies' Rebellion, but she it was, <laughs> I did do a collection for her, and that's how I started. And um, a New York photographer who specializes in uh, photographing older New York women He's done a book called Advanced Style, Harry Seth Cohen. And he came and photographed me, and I was in the book, one of the few, I think, English people. And um, that became, that's when the director saw um, me in the book, and that's when I was asked to be asked in the film. Uh-huh. Now, the director is uh, a Sue, no, I've forgotten her. Born. Sue Bourne. Yeah. Sue Bourne. And how well was working with her? Um, yes, it was amazing. I mean, she is a very brilliant director, fantastic. And um, all of us did about five days filming, amazing. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll continue to talk a little bit more about the film yes. and also just about how much more work that you still got left to do. Absolutely. Yeah? Right on Gold FM, Speak Your Mind, we're talking about Fabulous Fashionista, a movie that you all ought to see. Rummy. Welcome back to Gold FM. Speak your mind right here on, uh, well, <laughs> Gold FM. We're talking about Fabulous Fashion Easter. And with is one of the stars of the show. And uh, that's uh, Bridget of a Sojourner. And, well, she's more known as a bodge here in Fiji. Now, we've been talking about uh, the movie and how it has changed you and how much more work you've done mm. since making the movie in 2013. 
that's a few years back yes. and the work that you've done so far and how it has changed the rest of your your, your co your co actors in the movie yes. now the other five ladies do you still get on and, and who are these five other yes ones? there's baroness trumpington who is in the house of lords she's the oldest woman in the house of lords okay. and then there's um, sue kreitzman who's uh, an artist and she's just had a huge window in selfridges the main one of the main um stores in the middle of london really? um, she's one of six older artists over 60 who've been chosen to have a whole window there and all her artifacts are there then there's Jean, who actually, um, her relative did a painting of her, and it won second prize in the BP National Portrait um, Exhibition at the, one of the National Portrait Galleries. Okay. And um, uh, Daphne is still modeling, and Jilly is still, um, well, she's still running, she's still choreographing, choreographing, I don't know that word, <laughs> and being a choreographer. And um, she's made a video of her exercises. Um, so all of us are still working and have progressed into doing different things after the film. So it's amazing, isn't it? That, I mean, I, I couldn't think, <laughs> who, you know, if, of this, like ever being made a film like this. Mm. To, how were you selected or how did... How, how were you selected? I don't know how the others were, but I, I as I said, um, you know, uh, Sue saw my picture through Ari in the, in the book, and yes, and said, oh, and I think she knew Fanny too, who did the, um, the, fil the uh, collection that I was in. Mm -hmm. So there was in a network, you know, and yeah. So and now I'm, you know, still approached by, I think I've had two emails since I've been here, which is only three weeks. <laughs> um, from different countries asking me to do different articles and um, yeah. Oh, there's the the movie. I mean, I haven't seen the film, mm. but basically follows your lives and also looks at how you look at style. Yes, it's really about our lives and it's about our lives now. How we and I think that's quite an interesting aspect. A young woman um, was saying the other day how she thought it was here in Fiji. She thought it was um, interesting that the film focused on the on the now rather than, you know, a lot of older people talk and of, reflect uh, and uh, their past lives become more apparent, whereas mm -hmm. these people are still sort of progressing. That's very interesting and it makes you even want to see this movie more yes. because of that, because yes. of not having to look back at yes. what you've Come, what what your life was because that's how people look at how when you have someone of an older age yes. to look at their past life and yes. not what they're going through yeah so how long was filming well it, as i think it was about five days each so it was quite oh. a lot okay and then um yes and then it was shown on channel four just one night and it had this most amazing response <laughs> i had um I had Japanese people from Japan, people from Mexico, and I'm sure all the others had too. All these um, uh, sort of uh, Res yeah responses, responses from all these other countries. Well, that's amazing, and that's because it's it has it, it's been obviously shown in other other countries. Yes, oh, hence, it has, the, yeah. hence the hence yeah, the response. Yeah, yeah. Now and now we're showing it here. And now we're showing <laughs> it here. Now, you've already shown there was a private viewing. Yes, a private viewing a private for viewing. YWCA people, and uh -huh. it was this very small private um, viewing. But this is a public one tomorrow night. That's right, uh, at the University of the South Pacific. Right. And at the ICT Theatre. Yes, yes, at about 7, I think. Okay, 7 o'clock. Yes, and it's, just going to, it's not just going to be the film shown. Uh -huh. So it's not just um, a sort of shots of... Um, uh, yes, it's not just a film. I won't go into that now. It's not just a film, but we're going to have a panel discussion, hopefully an intergenerational discussion, um, and then questions on the floor. <laughs> so it's a sort of broad um, interest viewing and, and uh, discussion <laughs> responses about aging. And it's also going to challenge a few things also about how cultures is Ah, in the Pacific. Yes. So it should be yes, very interesting yes, and should yes. not be missed. Yes, not be missed. <laughs> All right. 
fashionista. Well, actually, I shouldn't say fa fabulous fashionista, but the fabulous fashionista is the name of the yes. the movie. Yes. And uh, if you can, do get yourself or uh, watch this. And also, we'll be well seeing our very uh, well our very own whole guest, um, uh, Budge. Thank you again for joining us on the Thank show. Thank you, Vitaly. It was great. And we're looking forward to more of your work. Thank and you. more movies to come, yeah? Um, well, I don't know about that. More <laughs> education. More All education. over the world. All right. Thank you again. Thank you. And enjoy the rest of your stay here. Thank you very much. And, and well, that quickly wraps up our show this uh, this afternoon. Thank you again for joining us. And do join us again on the next Speak Your Mind right here on Gold FM. 